This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Alert policing bags illegal 9mm pistol at teenager's murder scene. Members of the St. Catherine South Police Division recovered a Simiton Wesson 9mm pistol and one round of ammunition while conducting investigations at the scene of the murder of a teenager in Nagahead, Portmore in the parish on Monday night. The police are withholding the identity of the murdered teen who was gunned down at about 7 p.m. However, amid their investigations at the crime scene, the police searched adjoining premises and came up with the gun find. It was the 23rd illegal gun that was found in the division since the start of the year and reflects a 33% increase in gun recoveries over the corresponding period last year. The St. Catherine South Police Division is one of the island's more crime-ridden areas across the island. The division, in the latest police statistics released on April 24, recorded 45 murders, eight more than over the corresponding period last year, for a 21.6% increase. The reported 35 shootings in the division is three more and 7.9% less than last year, but has increased the number of individuals being injured as the 28 tally is five more than last year's figures. Five rapes and 27 robberies have been reported in the division so far this year, which is respectively four and nine less than the figures compiled at the same time last year. The statistics are completed with a number of break-ins, with the 11 reported so far this year being 18 less than that of last year. Clarendon College devastated as bus driver succumbs to injuries. Clarendon College principal David Wilson said he never imagined that his interaction with school bus driver Keith Dunkley on Tuesday evening would have been his last. In an interview with the news, he said, when he visited Dunkley following the multi-vehicle accident hours earlier, he was lying on a Chapleton hospital bed and was indicating that he felt like he wanted to throw up. The nurse asked if he could turn on his side, and at that point, we had to move from his bedside to allow the nurse to sort him out, Wilson said, adding that he was optimistic that Dunkley, 56, would have pulled through. He didn't seem like someone who would have died. He had injuries, but he was getting medical care, and we thought that he would have been brought back. Sharing that, the entire school community was devastated after getting news of Dunkley's passing about 12.30 on Wednesday. Wilson said that he had worked with Dunkley for more than 10 years. Dunkley was trusted by the school community, the principal said. I found him to be a caring and compassionate human being. As a driver, you never had to worry about his taking the students from campus and back safely, Wilson said. Herschel Brown, counselor for the Chapleton Division, from which at Dunkley Hills, described the late bus driver as a quiet but witty individual with a broad smile. Dunkley, he said, never missed an opportunity to lobby for his community of Beckford Crawl, where his family resides. Police Sergeant Robert Richards, sub-officer in charge of traffic for Clarendon, said that the deadly collision occurred along the new roads about 3.15 p.m. Tuesday. The crash involved four vehicles, a Ford motor truck and a Toyota Coaster traveling northerly, and a Toyota Probox motor car and a Toyota Highest motor truck heading in the opposite direction. Richards said allegations are that the Toyota Coaster bus was in the process of overtaking a vehicle while rounding a corner, causing the driver of the Toyota Highest to serve. The Highest driver collided with the Ford truck and head on with the Pro Box. The highest was also hit by the Toyota Coaster. The Toyota Pro Box cab driver, 37-year-old Renford Hector Moen of Ballard's River, was flung from the vehicle, succumbing to his injuries. Dunkley was pinned to the unit and was cut from the wreckage after firefighters were summoned. He was transported to the Maypen Hospital, where he was admitted and underwent treatment. Richards used the opportunity to appeal to motorists to negotiate roadways wisely. Drive within the required speed limit and do not overtake if it is not safe to do so. This way, we will be able to save lives and we will be able to stay on the road, the policeman cautioned. Taxi man to pay big for slashing ex-girlfriend A taxi man who slashed his ex-girlfriend during a dispute pleaded guilty when he appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Wednesday. Aubrey Bailey, 30, is to return to court on June 18 to further settle the matter. 
It was reported that on March 19 along Malines Road in St. Andrew, Bailey started shouting at the complainant who he had earlier picked up in Halfway Tree. He reportedly asked her several questions including, where are you coming from and who have you been seeing? After she refused to answer, the complainant said Bailey attacked her. She said she later realized that she was bleeding. I kill me, I go kill it away tonight. A dad Aubrey said to me on the night, she told the court, but Bailey claimed that his actions were unintentional. She found out I had a newborn baby, so that's why she was fighting me in the car, cursing a lot and grabbing the steering wheel, which was popping off, and I told her to ease off and she was just coming at me, so that's how the knife come in, he told the court. I was even the one who put the bandage on it, Your Honor, on the night, and we were there all along, and then I leave to get her some help. When I come back, she was gone. I didn't even know that she reported the incident to the police or anything. However, the complainant denied starting the fight. Sir, that's a lie. I found out about the baby on the Sunday after everything happened, she said. Parish Court Judge Chester Crooks asked the complainant if she was in a relationship with Bailey at the time. No, sir. Always tell him I don't want any relationship from him, she replied. The complainant also said that since she pressed charges, Bailey's baby mother and other relatives have been pestering her to drop the case. If he is willing to compensate you for the injuries, will you accept that? Crooks asked. I would want $500,000, sir, she said. Bailey's $50,000 bail bond was extended with conditions until he returns to court. He must report to the Olympic Gardens Police Station on Mondays and Fridays between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. He must also keep away from the complainant. 16-year-old Javiana Whittingham is missing. An Ananda alert has been activated for 16-year-old Javiana Whittingham of Bogue Heights, Montego Bay in St. James, who has been missing since Thursday, May 6. She is of brown complexion, slim build, and is about 5 feet 9 inches tall. Reports from the Montego Bay Police are that Javiano was last seen at home about 1.20 a.m. Her mode of dress is unknown. She has not been heard from since. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Javiano Whittingham is asked to contact the Montego Bay Police at 876-979-8452, Police 119 Emergency Number, or the nearest police station. Four additional COVID-19 deaths, 144 new cases. Jamaica has recorded four more COVID-19 fatalities, pushing the tally to 793. Those who have died are an 84-year-old woman from Kingston and St. Andrew, a 63-year-old woman from Manchester, a 95-year-old woman from Kingston and St. Andrew, and a 95-year-old man from Clarendon whose death was previously under investigation. Meanwhile, there were 144 new cases with ages ranging from 1 day to 95 years, pushing the total to 46,338, with 23,305 being active. Of the new cases, 79 are women and 65 are men. Kingston and St. Andrew, as well as St. James, recorded the most new infections with 21 each, followed by St. Catherine with 17 and then Manchester with 14. A total of 1,123 tests were conducted. The country's positivity rate stands at 18.7%. In the meantime, there were 114 more recoveries, increasing the total to 21,893. Some 227 persons are in hospital, with 12 being moderately ill and 21 critically ill. Five persons are in government quarantine, while 24,132 are at home. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.